Okay, now at this time, we will call on our evaluator, TM Alwyn St. Omer, to introduce our speaker of the evening to get Zoomified. Over to you, TM Alwyn. Thank you, Toastmasters and guests. You'd think that after obtaining the highest distinction, which is DTM, one would say, I have arrived. But distinguished Toastmaster Mark Young remains quite prolific as he continues his Toastmasters journey. He keeps going, doing his speeches with a renewed fervor as he voraciously takes on new projects. On his current path, engaging humor, he embarks on the project Managing Online Meetings. Today, he will practice facilitating an online meeting and has 25 to 45 minutes to do so. Conducting an online meeting or webinar with visual aids on any topic using software that best fits the needs and geographic area. Please welcome to the virtual lectern, distinguished Toastmaster, Mark Young, his speech, Zoomified. Thank you so much and welcome everyone to this evening's session that we have titled Zoomified. Now we know that one of the challenges that face us in this new complex competitive world is how we share information. And we know that up to perhaps three years ago, the word Zoom was not active in our vocabulary. It became a new word that we started using and we got to know more about. So the world in which we communicate now has evolved to the point where with just internet and a, a laptop, a few keystrokes, we can have a virtual meeting just about anywhere with anyone. And we can be philosophic about it all while we enjoy participating and seeing our friends and companions. This evening's presentation will have as its objective to look at Zoom conferencing and the intent is to enable you, the participant, to assist your club or your organization and even yourself when it comes to participating in Zoom meetings. Now, I want to start off with a poll before I continue. And just to know just where we are as it pertains to Zoom. So can we see the poll that is launched? All right, I'm seeing some numbers coming in. 6 of 9, fairly familiar, 3 of 10, well familiar, not too familiar, have 0, almost a pro, have 0. So of 11 persons who have responded, 7 say that they are fairly familiar, and 4 have indicated that they are well familiar with Zoom. And, and that is good for me because I just wanted to get an idea of where we are as it pertains to this training session. Now, the first 25 minutes of this evening session, we will be looking at Zoom profiles, how to look at your profile, editing. We'll be looking at the settings and we will be looking at meetings. So we'll be looking in the Zoom, the Zoom web browser so that you can go in and do any changes that you need to do for yourself, your company, or your club. So after these three settings, we have another 25 minutes where we will be looking now at the Zoom web portal. So we'll be looking at the, the desktop client settings and we will pay particular attention to sharing of documents, audio, video, the pinning and spotlighting, the security settings, because we know that that is quite important now with the advent of Zoom bombing. We'll be looking at polls. We'll be looking at breakout rooms as well and how Zoom can help you in your business and the cost of Zoom as well. So I have a joke that probably you can answer. How do trees join online meetings? How do trees join online meetings? They log in. <laughs> yeah, great, see? They log in and that's what we're doing, even though we are not trees, but we're logging in. So thank you for that response. So let me go ahead now. And so in the meantime, let me ask another, another joke. How does NASA organize a, a conference call? How does NASA organize a conference call? 
space. They say it? In space. In space? Not really. Do they play it by ear? No, no, no. They, they plan it. That's what they do. Gotcha. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. It's a lousy joke. Okay. So anyone have a, a, another Zoom joke for me? Yes, I do. Oh, great. Since I'm the joke and quote. So a student is late for a Zoom class. What took you so long, the teacher asks. Technical dis difficulties, the student answers. I've heard that excuse a hundred times. Let me guess, your Wi-Fi didn't work. No, my clock. Oh, <laughs> and that was a technical difficulty. The clock didn't work. <laughs> All right, so now I have my screen up and I'm hoping that everyone can see it. And this is the normal Zoom screen that you would see when you go into zoom.us. It gives you your profile, your meetings, your webinars, your contacts, recordings and settings and such. So if we can see, we have politely asked Elka to use her Zoom today. So we want to start with, let me start with the profile. So in your profile, this is where you would come to edit your picture. So you can come in and change your picture, put whatever picture. We want to see what you look like when you join us in a Zoom meeting. And you can come across across and edit and you can edit your name and whatever else you want to, to do. So that is the part where you would come in. So it cancel that. So we know how to put in our picture, our name. There's not much that we want to change in here because our language is English, our time zone it remains at GMT minus four. And our date, some people prefer to put the, the day, the American version or the English version, that's totally up to you. It gives us the meeting information, your personal ID, your host key. And it also gives us the account, the type of account that we have and the amount of participants that can participate in a Zoom meeting, in any one Zoom meeting. So we say our maximum is at 100. And this would be the basic for our profile. So we come in our profile and those are minimum changes that we have to make when it comes to setting up our Zoom profile. The next one I want to look at is the meetings. But before we go to the meetings, let, let me touch on settings because settings is quite important. This is where you set up everything before your meeting actually starts. When you set up your settings, this is the, the basic part of it. This is the base. So everything that follows in your meetings will follow what you have set up here in your settings. However, during your meetings, you can always do some changes. So not because you've made some settings here, that means that you cannot change them. You can change them in your meeting itself. Now, Zoom has disallowed us from changing the security settings here. So all, all the security settings are the same for that, that it's secured with this security option. And by the way, you can ask any question as we go along, or if you'd like to post it in the chat, you can look at it from there as well. Now, we always recommend that you use the waiting room because you want persons to come in and you want to be able to identify those persons before you, they enter into your real meeting. So you know who they are. Of course, they can come in under a pseudonym or a name that they saw in a, in a previous meeting that they can copy and you wouldn't know. But this at least gives us a minimum level of security that we know who these people are before we let them into our meeting. A lot of times people would come into the meetings, especially from a phone that would just say iPhone 6 or Samsung S7, and you wouldn't know who they are. So when they are in the waiting room, that is where you would ask them, please rename yourself so that we know who you are. We'd like to know our guests and our fellow Toastmasters. So you ask them to rename themselves. The waiting room options that you can also go into the waiting room and you can customize the waiting room to let it say whatever you want it to say. Welcome to Antigua Toastmasters Club. The host will allow you to join shortly. Kindly rename yourself while you wait. So something like that you can put in. Meeting passcodes are very important because it allows us to know that that person who joined our meeting knows the password 
and that we have shared with them. So it's very important to have that meeting password. There's another important one here that requires pass code for participating persons if they are joining by phone. They have to have that password as well. Before, we used to embed the passcode in the meeting link invitation so that once they click that meeting link invitation, they go directly into the meeting. But it is advised that we do not allow that to continue. So we just take that off and they cannot just enter into the meeting. They have to go into the waiting room first. Block users in specific areas or domains. You can, it's up to you to select that. You can select it or not. Approve block entry from specific regions. You can select that as well. And now in the schedule meeting, this is a nice one uh, because it's it applies directly to us. When the host is starting the meeting, when you are starting your meeting, you can decide if you want to have your camera on as you start or you can have it off. It's up to you to make that selection. We have it off and that is because sometimes you're not fully prepared as yet to be on camera. So you have it off and when you are ready, then you turn on your camera. And then similarly for a participant's video, you want the participant to be able to control when they want their video to be seen, when they want to turn on their camera. So we allow that as well. The audio type, the, we can use telephone and computer or just the telephone or just the computer audio. As I mentioned, I haven't heard, I've seen anyone joining in by, by telephone. It's always either by cell phone or by the computer audio. And we have that selected. Now they allow participants to join before host. That's up to you as well. If you want them to, to join before you actually open the meeting, they can join what will happen. They will be placed in the waiting room until you open the meeting and you are ready. So if you haven't started the meeting as yet, but someone wants to join, they can join and just that they will be in the waiting room. And while in the waiting room, they won't know who else are there with them. Let's see, and another, another one, hello. And remember, you can ask questions that slow me down. Mute participants, when they join a meeting, you want to make sure they are muted because sometimes they may join a meet meeting with their mics open and it can be distracting. So once they join your meeting, they, you know automatically that they are muted they have the option to then unmute and begin to chat with you. Let's see, another one, the chat, we allow chats and you can also allow users to save the chats from the meeting. So if you want your users, your participants to see the chat that happened, you can allow it or you can disallow it. It's up to, to you as well. And you can allow the private chat. The private chat is if one, one meeting, participant wants to communicate with another, they can communicate so privately. If you have it off, it means that the host can communicate with anyone in the meeting, but the participants will not be able to communicate with another, only with the host. So it's up to you two to select what you want. Auto save the chats, that's always recommended, rather than having to try to save it or forgetting to save it separately. Leave song when someone joins, uh, that, that's a little distracting. Every time someone comes in, you will hear a little ping so that you know that you have a new entrant, but it distracts you and it's, it's uh, annoying for others as well. So you just take that off. You can save your files, provide feedback to Zoom. That's up to, to you as well to select if you want to send that to, to Zoom. And the co-host, you can select the, if you want co-host in your meeting. Sometimes you may decide that you don't want a co-host. You, you're just doing this meeting for yourself and you prefer not to have the co-host. One of the drawbacks of having co-hosts is if you're having polls, all those who are co-hosts are unable to participate in the polls. So if you have a meeting, say 15 persons, but you have four persons who are co-hosts, then and yourself as a host. So five of those 15 persons will not be able to vote in when polls are being conducted. So just be careful with that and keep that in mind. Meeting polls and quizzes. Yes, you want to allow those. We have the surveys. We don't have that tick, but you can take it if you want to conduct a survey. If you're doing a presentation and in your presentation, you want to do a survey, you ask that the host have the meeting survey permitted. Let's see what else is quite interesting. The screen sharing, yes, screen sharing. Who can share screen? 
we have selected that all participants can share screen because we know that sometimes during your presentation, you want to be able to share a PowerPoint or a video. So you're allowed to do that. And if you are doing it, then only the host has been selected to be able to interrupt you and share screen as well. The desktop screen sharing for meetings you host, it's up to you to select yes or no, and also to disable screen sharing when guests are in the meeting. So you can allow or disallow that. Let me allow that just to show you how it's done. You can allow that. And it will tell you that the settings have been updated immediately. Annotation, annotation is allowed. Annotation is where you have the whiteboard and you can share the whiteboard and have persons either write or type on the whiteboard when you want to share whiteboard information. So you can do that. Remote control, this is another one. And I think we will be practicing this one. You'll be seeing this this evening, how we can share remotely the, your desktop to someone who can take over your desktop and control it remotely. So we will be looking at that. Our nonverbal feedback, that's the emoticons that we like to share and the reactions. And allow users to change their names. Yes, you want them to be able to change their name. Like I mentioned, they would come in with one name and you don't know who they are. So you ask them to please put their correct name and they will be able to do it and they will be able to rename themselves. Other than that, you will have the burden of doing the work. The high participants profile pictures in a meeting, this is not selected, but we can always select that. And what this does is that if we have a meeting with 30 persons and 10 persons, they don't have a, a profile picture, you can decide that you don't want to see those who do not have on a profile picture. You don't want to see those whose video are on. So you select that and only those with their videos on will be seen. It comes in handy if you are doing table topics and you ask everyone, please turn on your cameras. It's table topics time, be prepared, have your mics ready to open. And once they have their camera on, you'll be able to see them and you can ask those persons immediately a table topic question. Um, DJ Mark, can I ask a question on that one? Yes. The high, the participants, profile pictures in a meeting. I remember attending a contest for District 81. And when I attended that contest, I was not able to see anybody's profile picture. I thought that was what you use that function for. Yes, you can hide everybody. You can have all the, everyone participant profile picture, but you okay. will be able to see when they, if they the have on their video. If the video is on, okay, thank yes. you. Yes, and we will do a test, we'll do a, a, a demonstration on that as well. Uh, thank you. Uh, um, do, you want to, do you want to leave that selected? Yes. I have a question along the same line too, DTM Mark. Yes, go ahead. Uh, in joining um, large scale seminars and webinars, and you notice you cannot see anyone at all except the, the host. Uh, is that for a bigger um, type Zoom or, or it's here in this um, hundred no, it's, setting as well? It's, here, it's right here in, the, in this setting where uh -huh. you can select only those who, for example, if I make four persons co-host and those four persons have on their videos, then only those four persons will be seen in a group of 20, 30 persons. And we can do that in Zoom. In webinar, only those who are presenters in the webinar who have been given that status will be able to show their pictures. So if you are attending a webinar and you're not a presenter, you won't have that option. You will, they will not share that option with you. So all you will see are just the the presenters. Right. So if two presenters are there for this session and for the next session you have eight presenters, then you'll be able to see the two and then you'll be able to see the eight. But you won't know who else is on that webinar either. Right. And that, okay. that is one of the differences with the webinars and with the Zoom meetings. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let's go report Zoom. The breakout rooms, that's, this is another nice one. The breakout room is where you allow hosts to assign participants when you are scheduling. So you can assign, you can create breakout rooms before the start of the meeting and assign persons 
at that point to breakout rooms so that when your meeting starts, you already know those who are scheduled to be in the breakout rooms. For that though, you need to have those person's information. And to get that information, they would have had to register to attend. In a general Zoom meeting that we would have every Thursday, you would not be able to do that. But if you want to do that, then you can ask everybody, register for this Zoom meeting. You capture that information. And from that, you can either create a, a CSV file where you can download everything into Zoom and you can do it straight from Zoom. Or you can go and select them and pre-select pre them to the particular breakout room that you want them to, to be in. But like I said, you have to have that information prior to the start of the meeting. Question? Yes. Or it gives the option of um, automatically assigning them. Yes, you can automatically assign and you can manually assign. Or you can have them choose which room they would like to attend. So there are three options there for the breakout rooms. Okay. Actually, um, when you, like all you mentioned, persons just joining, like here in this, in this um, Toastmasters meeting, I uh, suppose you wanted to put us in breakout room rooms, so you will automatically assign us. Now, assign us. Now, if you don't want yourself, well, your host, um, the co-host and the other persons to be in a breakout room, how would you do that with an automatically assigned, automatically assigned rooms? Okay, so as the host, what you will have to do is to go back into, if you have two or three breakout rooms, you have to go back into each one of them and see where that co-host that you don't want to be in that room if you see where they are, and then you reassign them back to the main room. Okay. So it puts, it puts back the work on you as the host, but only the host will be able to do that. Okay, thank you. If it is done automatically, if it is done where, you, where the host select or where the participant select, then the participant can move from one room to the next. If you allow them to choose their room, they can move from one room and go to another room. If you are the one who, who is, you are doing it manually, then you can go in and move that participant from room one to room two. But the participant will not be able to make that choice for themselves. Thank you. Um, You're welcome. DK Mark, you have yes, a hand Pachita. Hi, Pachita. Okay. Hello, I was also thinking if you're doing it manually, it means that we could use the waiting room when they bring them into the waiting room. We could assign them at that point if we if they, we don't have a red pre-registration. From the waiting room, you wouldn't be able to, to assign them to a breakout room. They would have to be in the main room before you can transfer them into a breakout room, but not from the waiting room. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so the other one after that, uh foreign camera control yes hi barbara how yes how this one um start a zoom meeting period how, how do you start you, the zoom meeting you've never done a zoom meeting how, okay how this one okay. okay okay i'll get to that uh -huh. i'll get into starting the meeting okay anything else uh, uh before we continue here we have the virtual yes go ahead you have a red light at so this time check oh Okay, so let me quickly go. These are just uh, that what we can select, but everything is straightforward. And because my time is running out and I still wanted to go into the other part where we can look at the, the meetings itself quickly. I'll, I'll take a couple of minutes from my next presentation. When you go in meetings, you will see all the meetings that you in your, in, in your Zoom account have done. Now, I must point out at this point, though, that this Zoom account is a paid account. It's not the free account. So some of the things that you will be seeing in this account, you will not be seeing in your account if it is a free, a free account. So just bear that in mind. So you can look at your meetings, all your upcoming meetings, your previous meetings that you have had. It will show you all the previous meetings that you have had. So I just wanted to look at these two. But if we come back to the upcoming meetings, this meeting is today. 
if you come to today's meeting and you here over here uh toastmaster barbara you will see you will see where it says start this meeting so once you have created the meeting you will see start this meeting before you even start the meeting you want to create that meeting so you go into this part that says schedule a meeting so if i click schedule a meeting this is what will come up and you will see the topic the topic can be barbara's meeting and you can give a description learning to tango the date the time the duration for an hour gmt minus four hours and you can say if it is a recurring meeting or not if it is just a plain meeting so you fold these out it will give you your passcode that you have for it and it will generate the meeting ID immediately. And this, this is what you will share with others. So you, you have your video off, your participant video off and things like that. And you save this and now you have your meeting set up. So that is where you would come first of all to set up your meeting. Is that okay, Barbara? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, so in meetings, you come and you schedule your meeting. So let's go back now and you have scheduled a meeting and this is your meeting now. So here you see Antigua Toastmasters Club Zoom meeting. This is what I want to share with you. You click on this Zoom meeting here and this is the information that comes up about that meeting, that meeting that you had just created, which is happening now. Gives you everything that, all the information pertinent to that meeting, the meeting ID, your passport and everything else, registration link. And this is the link Barbara, that you would send, you copy this invitation and you would send it out by email or WhatsApp so others can join in the meeting. One of the nice features that Zoom has now, because this was a meeting where you register because other meetings, the normal meetings, you won't register, but the registration information, a lot of other information is shared here where it gives you the registration and it tells you the amount of persons that have registered and they have been automatically approved and you can edit it you can leave it automatic or you can go and you know i want to manually allow me persons to to come but that's a lot of work so yeah allow it automatically and it will just send out the email to those who have registered now after this meeting is concluded this is where you also come in and another you will also see here information that pertains to the meeting how many persons actually attended it will tell you the amount of times that, for example, that they dropped out and had to come back in. So it will give you that running information about the it, that detailed part of your meeting. So you can know, okay, only 30 persons showed up, but of those 30 persons, for the two hours, 10 persons stayed two hours, five persons were an hour and a half. This person joined six times because they kept dropping in and out, in and out. So all those information you'll be able to see right here again. So you can always come back to get your information. And that is what I wanted to share in this first portion of Zoom. So any other questions, I'll stop sharing. And you can do any questions that you have now. If not, what I'll do, we'll go into the other part of this evening's meeting where we'll be able to share screen and what I will do and to show how it is done remotely as well. I will ask Toastmaster Julie to share her screen and then give me remote access to that screen that I will be able to manipulate it and continue with the training. So Toastmaster Julie, if you could kindly share your screen with us. All right. Okay, so what we are seeing is Toastmaster Julie's screen. And I can now access that screen by coming on and let me see here. Yes, here. So now I can unmute, I can mute and unmute. I can stop video. And this is how, where, where you would come in to mute and unmute yourselves and others, and where you can change to which headset you want and which speakers you want to use. Another important thing to know is your video. If you can go to your video, and this is where you would select your background. If you want to have a, a background, this is where you come in to choose your virtual background. Now in settings, you can go to video settings here, and you will be able to, to also do changes that will affect 
how you are seen and how you come across. A lot of these changes though will also uh, depend on your bandwidth. It uses more bandwidth, so just be careful of that. You can mirror your, your video. So if I go and I mirror my video, actually what you're seeing is Julie's video because this is her laptop after all. So I can just mirror it and it changes and you can see the changes. Oh, you, you can't? You can see the changes? Yes. A anyone else? Yes. You can, all right. So mirror the touch up the appearance. You can go and touch up the appearance and adjust for low light or leave it at, at automatic. This is some of the, the changes that you can do with your video and with your audio. So let me stop that and go. Now, one of the other things you can do, there's a green shield in upper left-hand corner around here. So it is the meeting information. And want, I want to point that out quickly to you because this is where if someone calls you quickly and asks you, uh, what is the, the login information? What is the, the passcode? This is where you would come. You click on that green screen and it would be able to give it to you. So it gives you the information. And you get to a master's club, your meeting ID, and your passcode number. And you can share that quickly with someone who is on, on your phone and you're already logged in. So you can always find that information there. Now we spoke about the Zoom bombing and one of the things that we look at is to go straight into security to help to prevent things like that from occurring. If in the event you, you detect that something is wrong, that someone is trying to share something that they shouldn't be or take trying to take over your your meeting you come into security and it can be done from by you or yourself or by the co-host come into security and there's this part in red that says suspend participant activities this is one of the first things i recommend that you do you come in and you click that what will happen is that your meeting will just get suspended Nobody will be able to communicate. It will look as though you dropped off, your internet went. But while, while that is happening, you, you as the host or co-host will then go into the remove participant part, the remove participant. And if you can identify that person who came in and who is causing these disruptions, then you go and you remove that participant. So these two are very important. And it's always good if we're having Zoom meetings to have one person as a as the a Zoom tech, as a co-host, who will always be ready to have this portion up and be ready to hit that button. Just hit it as you see something, hit it so that it's, it just cuts down, shuts down, and then you go in deeper and try to find out who is causing these disruptions and try to remove them. So remember this, this is quite important today. Um, DTM Mark, at what point do you lock the meeting? Now, you, yes, we can go up here into lock meeting. Now, the lock meeting feature is a great feature when you are having a, a meeting where you know that for me only, my, my Toastmasters from this club will be attending. Nobody else will be attending. Or if I'm having an executive meeting and seven, eight persons are already in the meeting, nobody else will be coming in. Then I go and I lock my meeting so nobody else can join that meeting, even if they have the passcode and the Zoom ID, they cannot join because the meeting is locked. You can decide if you're going to lock your meeting, especially if you're having a contestant briefing and only contestants are supposed to be in there, then you lock your meeting because nobody else should be able to attend. Nobody else should come in. If you're having a speech contest and at that point, Nobody should be coming into your speech contest to interrupt, so you can lock your meeting. And after that, you can unlock your meeting. So the, the lock meeting feature is not something you use if you are being Zoom bombed? No, because the, the bomber would already be in your meeting. Okay. So when you lock it, you're locking him inside. Okay. So that, that is the, the one for security. Let me just mention too. And here again, as I mentioned, when you're doing the meeting settings and you do those changes there, this is where you can come in and make adjustments so you can override the meeting settings. Those meeting settings are the default. This is where you do the control. So you can stop the chat. If you don't want to, anyone to share chat right now, then you disable the chat. After the presentations are finished, then you come back in security 
and you can enable back the chat. So chatting can happen. So security is this little function with the black and white shield is very important to come in. This is where you can, can really control your meeting. How do you unlock the meeting? You just come up to the lock right up here and the upper, the first, first one that you meet that says lock meeting and you click that. So unlock it? No, that will lock. Once it's locked, then you come back into security and you unlock. Where do you see unlock? I don't see unlock. Yes, after you lock it, it yeah. says lock. Then, you, then when you open it back again, it tell you to unlock. Okay. So it will be this, that same position: lock, unlock. It will change as okay. you as you do the difference. Okay. Hi, Marcella. Hi, hello. Okay, with regards to the Zoom bombers, I remember someone saying that you can do something like put them in a breakout room and keep them there until the meeting is over. And when they're in the breakout room, they cannot disrupt your meeting. Do you think that would work? Yes, you can, but I wouldn't even want to have them around. I just eject them out, totally. Mm. Just remove them from the meeting. Okay then, thank you. But I can see why they may want to do that if they are going to capture that person's information. But again, the person will be using a, a fake name, so it's hard to even report it to Zoom. Okay, I was just wondering if that, if doing that can actually work. No, I just go and and remove the participant totally. Can you show us how to go into different rooms? The breakout rooms, okay, great. Yeah, the breakout rooms, I don't know how to do that. All right, so let me move move down the participants. The participants here will tell you how many participants are in your meeting. Yeah. And we see that we have 26 participants. It yeah. tells you who are the co-hosts, who are the hosts, and give you a, an indication here of the microphone where you can see who is speaking and who has their microphones on. So normally if someone is disrupting or they forget that they have on their microphones and there's a disturbance in the background, you can come here and you can, you can look and see whose microphone is on quickly. And this is where now you go into more and you would come and... We're not seeing your screen. You're not seeing that. Okay. Well, if you can go yourself and open participants. Yes. Okay, and you see that participants list coming up and you see a microphone and a video beside it in red on the right hand corner on the edge. No. No? Okay. But, okay. The, uh, let, let me ask the co-host to, to do it. Are you seeing it now? Okay. I don't see any microphone. It, right here on the on in on the right hand column besides the name you're not seeing those I see a microphone but you said a red microphone i don't see a red microphone no well on my screen it comes up as red but the oh. microphone is in red and the video the video camera is in red oh i don't know mine is white okay Okay, so when you are talking, I can see the microphone just going up and down, up and down, indicating who is who is talking. So this is where now I know Jean Small is, is talking, so I can always go to Jean Small and mute her. Because sometimes you forget that you do have on your microphone. Okay. Dita, Mark, do you still have control of my screen? Because it's saying, oh, okay, now it's saying you're controlling the screen. Okay, so let me close that and get back all right so we have the the participants we we were looking at the polls and chat and recording but let me go to the recording recording is quite easy just go on the it has a pause and a stop here so you can start recording and you can stop recording or you can go once it is started go in the upper left hand corner and you see the recording there with a pause and a stop so you can always stop the recording or pause the recording. You can pause the recording in the event that you have a long break, for example, during 
given the five minute break, just pause the recording so you don't have to be recording all that and go through it. Then you come back after break and can resume recording. So quickly I have to uh, top and more the polls. Let me go into polls and I want to share the poll. So now this is where you would come into to, for the polls if you have a poll already. But you can always go, you end the poll. See, I've ended the poll. I can share the results of that poll and everyone can see the results of that. And I can stop sharing after that. You are going to do sharing, sending people to rooms. I am sharing the results of the poll to everyone in the room, yes. Everyone can see it. You saw it? I'm seeing it, yes. Okay. So you, everyone will be able to, to see how the polls went. There's another part where I can come now and I can, if I go and I do a poll, you won't be able to see it because then it will take me out from this and go into Windows. And that is where I will be creating the poll. So I will have to come out from this when I'm finished and go to show you how to create the polls. So let me finish with this and come out of that, finish with that poll. So let's make a note of that. I'll come back to doing the polls. The breakout rooms and the screen share. The screen share, as I mentioned, you can go into screen share, but I cannot share this screen because I'm using Julie's screen. So I have to do the screen share when I leave for, from this as well. But the breakout rooms, I can do and go into the breakout room and it tells me how many rooms, asks me how many rooms do I want to create for breakout rooms. So I can say I want to create four rooms. Uh, we are not we are not seeing your screen. You're not seeing that. No. If you want me to share, see if you will be able to see. Okay. It. Okay. Are you able to see that? Create breakout rooms. Okay, yes, I'm seeing that now. Okay. And and what happened is I, I, again it's Julie's screen that I'm seeing. So what, what I'm sharing is my screen. So yes, so we have the create breakout rooms. Mm -hmm. And you can create as many breakout rooms as you want. So you can say four, or you want to go up to five or six breakout rooms. And you select if you want it done automatically, manually, or let you, the participant, choose. So we do it, we select manual because we want to say who is going into which room. So if we do that manually, I can go and create that breakout room. And it tells me that I have six breakout rooms. And here is where you go and re you can rename them. And you can go and delete delete the room. Okay, I don't want room three, so I delete room three. Ask me to confirm and I say yes, I deleted room three. Now I can go now and assign persons who I want to go for those rooms. So if I, I can send, let me just select a few, a few persons. to that room and I will just use that as an example and I will open those rooms but before I open the room there's also the option button where you can go and it tells it gives you other options that you can use for your breakout rooms if you decide you want to allow the participants to choose their room after 30 minutes the room will close so you can change that 30 to 6 30 to 15 of the 20 and the countdown after the breakout room is closed it starts at 60 seconds, but you can decide, I don't want 60 seconds, I only want 10 seconds after the room is closed for them to come back in. And after 30 minutes, I don't want 30 minutes, I want my breakout room to be shorter. So you can you can do those select selections. Then you go and you open the rooms. So Jason, Kisma, and Morvet should be leaving us and going into that breakout room. Now you can still see the breakout room in progress. Can you see that on the screen? Yes, yes, we yes. are seeing okay. that they're going, yes. Great. All right, so now I come down and I go to my breakout rooms and I see that Jason has already entered into room two. Kisma has not entered yet and Morvet has not joined us yet. So these I can see. Now, because Jason is here, I can decide, okay, Jason came in first, so what I'll do, I'll move him to the blue room. I want males in blue and females in yellow. So I will move Jason to the blue room. So now Jason ha is, has disappeared from room two 
I am seeing that he has been assigned to the Blue Room, but he has not joined us yet. And there he is. He has joined the Blue Room. And I know because this has turned from white, this little dot has turned from white to green. We are not and seeing a second screen. We are now. not seeing that. You are seeing that. Okay. We are still seeing the list of persons in the meeting and the okay. option to close the rooms. All right. So now it would have to be done it. from... Yes, it we are seeing it now. Okay. So I see that Jason is in... Room how did and get, Jason sorry, has. Sorry, DTM Mark. How did you get to show that screen? This. Yeah. In the in the breakout room. When I go to breakout room, do you see two screens? No. Are you seeing two screens? screens? No. Only one. No, one oh, screen. In one screen. Let me recreate this room then. Let me start over. Sorry, if you can see. This is where we created the room, the breakout room, right? And this, you could just go and you would click on breakout room at the bottom. You see where you can create the breakout room? Yes, 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 yes. Right. So once you click on that, this will come up, create, and it will ask you how many breakout rooms you want. So you can select, I'll select three breakout rooms. I will assign it manually, and then I will go and hit create, recreate. So I recreated that breakout room that we did previously just to go over it. Now three rooms have popped up. And this is where I come to assign people to uh, participants to those rooms. So I will go to assign for room two, and I will then select who I want to be in those rooms. Well, he's assigned, yes, he assigned. Right, so I can hit Garfield, just to pull one, uh, Odin to pull another, and then I can go down and I can ask Sharon. So I've selected three persons, Garfield, Odin, and Sharon, to be in that breakout room. I go now to open all rooms because now I've selected for room one, room two, room three. And I see a list of all those who are unassigned into breakout rooms. And I also see the list of those who have been assigned to room two. I see Odin Cole has joined room two. Garfield and Sharon have not joined as yet. And I can come now and I can move any one of them to another room. If I decide I want to move Odin to, to another room, I can move Odin to room one. And see, Odin now is in room one. But he has been assigned to room one. He has not joined room one as yet. Now he has joined room one. And in room two, I have Garfield and Sharon. So we can see that part? Yes. Great. So this is how we get them into room one and room two and any other room that we want. So now I can take Garfield and I say, okay, Garfield, we're finished here and I will send you back to the main session. And I send Garfield back to the main session. I will know when he has gone and when he has arrived because his, the green dot will turn back into white. So he has not gone as yet, but as soon as he leaves room two, I will know that he is in the main room. You so, have the amber light, DTM Mark. Okay, right. So let me close all rooms. Uh, and for, again, from here, you can just go to anybody, root car, I can go to root car and I can assign root car to any one of the rooms. I can go and just select Peaches and I can assign her to any of the rooms. You can assign anyone to the rooms once you have created the rooms. And if you're creating, if you need four breakout rooms, it's always best to create five, create an extra room. So in the event that you want to, just put someone in there to have a quick discussion with. You can do that. If you're having a, a contest, you create breakout rooms so that you can put their contestants in there before the contest starts that they can discuss. They can talk about their microphones. You can look at their lighting in there. When it's finished, you break them out. So I close all rooms. It has 10 seconds for them, everyone to be back. So that's it for the breakout rooms. The only other thing now that I wanted to do was the the screen share. If there are no more, if there aren't any questions, I will ask Toastmaster Julie to, to take back control. The screen share and stop share. And oh, by the way, did you see how how, how it was done? Okay, let's let's do it quickly then. Toastmaster Julie, can you go back into the screen share? You will go into screen share, and when you go into oh, right, so once you go into screen share, you will see this. 
this pop up here that says remote control. Can we see that? And I select who I want to give control to. Right. So if you want to share your screen, you're doing a, a, a PowerPoint and you don't want to be distracted, you pull up a PowerPoint, you ask me to, or whosoever you want to run the PowerPoint show for you, you give them permission remotely and they will be able to do it. How and you after that, those are people who are present in the meeting. Yes, you have to be present in the meeting. Because okay. th from that list, you will see all those who are present. Okay. So you will be selecting from that list. Mm -hmm. And that person, you, you trust them. They won't be going back. They won't be going into your folders or anything. They will just be sharing what they're supposed to be sharing. Question. Um, yes. Some of the features you see on your laptop. Can you see that on the phone? Because some of the features I do not see on the phone itself. No, no. That is the thing with Zoom because a lot of the features that are available on your PC is not available on your phone. So for Zoom meetings, we always recommend that you, you use a laptop so that you can enjoy all the benefits available from Zoom. Thank you. I have one question. As relating to the breakout rooms, would you be able to do some of the features that you do in the main room in the breakout rooms? Like sharing screen and all no. that? No. In the breakout rooms, you won't be able to share screen. The, some of the features are very limited. And the recording can only be done by the co-host, by a co-host in the breakout room or someone you have assigned and given permission to do recordings in the breakout room. And the recordings itself will only be, be only be saved to your laptop, your PC. It cannot be saved to the cloud. Okay. And you're unable to spotlight as well in the breakout room. That is correct. No spotlighting. And we didn't even touch spotlighting and <laughs> uh, this evening. But quickly the, about the sharing. When you want to share, remember if you're sharing a video, you make sure that you're sharing the sound and you want to optimize your video as well so that when it shows on Zoom, it's not lagging and there's no latency in it itself. So let me quickly just share a video and see that you see. So we can see this video. And because we have the song selected already. Come on, y'all. Five seconds. Four, oh. three, two. Now you see what is happening because of my my bandwidth is kind of low, it, it doesn't play that well. But when you want to share your video, remember to share your video, make sure your sound is on and you optimize for video sharing. And I had one more that I wanted to share about the screen sharing. I think it, uh, Barbara had asked about it. If I come in here and I click my screen sharing, Barbara, the, the question that you asked was, no, so I what asked was, Sorry, I know I didn't ask about screen share. I asked about how you get online to, to organize or create a Zoom meeting. From the very beginning. Right. Okay, so you come and you log into Zoom. Zoom.us. Yeah. Are you going to do hosting? I've never hosted a meeting. Well, you have an opportunity now. So when yes. you come into Zoom.us, it, it, this is the information that you will see. You can join a meeting, you can host yes. a meeting, yes, and you can create your account. Yes, I know how to do that, but I never hosted a meeting. Okay, but okay. You host a meeting, like you can see that I am speaking. Okay, if I go back into the meeting, let me stop share and I go back into the meeting. Presently, I am just seeing myself because I am the one who has been spotlighted along with the timer. If I go in my upper right hand corner on the view, I can select the gallery view and then I will be able to see everyone. Now. The top right hand corner? Yes, uh, that says view. View, uh -huh. Yes, I you click on view. Person who is speaking, no? No, okay, once, it's, once you're in view and you select view, there are options there where you can select the speaker, speaker view, and only that person who is speaking you'll be seeing. Okay. Or you can select gallery where you'll be able to see. Everybody. Yeah, you'll be able to see up to, well, for me, maximum of 25 persons on my gallery view. 
yeah, yeah. Zoom offers the ability to see up to 49, but it depends on your your laptop. This is where now the where the spotlight is as well, where you can spotlight those who you want to to see. If the host spotlights the speaker, then only the speaker you'll be able to see in the speaker view. If the host spotlight the speaker and and two others, two evaluators, you'll be able to see them. If you pin anyone, you will be able to see the person who you pin. But that is not the default. How do you pin a person? Go in gallery view. Okay. okay. Yeah. Select gallery. I don't see. Oh, yes. I see speaker and gallery. Yes. Okay. Select gallery. Yeah. You see about 25 persons popping up there in, in oh, yeah. small space. All right. Yeah. Just go in the upper right hand corner of any one of the names. Upper right hand corner. And view? Yes. No, no. In any name. Just select a name now oh, from the 25. Okay. Okay. Select a name. And there you will see you will see the, the three dots that prompts you. You see that? No, I, 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 I click the name, but I don't see any three dots. No, don't click the name. Just, just go in any name, and once you just hover over in that name, you will, you will see it coming up. Uh, maybe, perhaps I can ask DTM Julie to just quickly share her screen. Oh, yeah, I see three dots now, yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Right, and from there, from there you'll be able to pin or, but you won't be able to, to spotlight them. And I see my time is just about up. So, so let me, let me quickly just, oh, you stop sharing. Oh, I thought you just wanted to see the pin. No, 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 no. I didn't get to, to, <laughs> to, to show it as yet. Okay. Okay, so this is where you come in and you just go over a name. So if I look at Barbara or, or yes. Elka, you see the three little dots? Yes. Okay, and that will come up after you, you, you hit that. It will tell you to either pin that, that speaker or that person or add as a spotlight. If the host adds it as a spotlight, then by default, that is the person who everyone will be seeing. But individually, you may not want to see the speaker, you may want to, for some reason, look at someone else and you can just pin that person, like the timer. And when you pin that person, that person will then come up on your screen, but your individual screen, uh -huh. not everybody else's screen. That's your personal pin. So you have a timer there? No, but you can, can pin anyone. Time? Just, 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 uh-huh. The show timer is there in red, the timer is there in red. Already yeah. telling me that I, oh, I need to go red. home. Red. This is yes. Red yes. So when we tell you as a speaker and you have five to seven minutes, pin the timer, that is where you come in. You pin the timer that you can see the timer on your screen. Nobody else will be seeing the timer where you are seeing the timer. That is for you. I have, Unless... a, I have a problem with that. So I will really uh -huh. like to pin the timer. I'm always going over time. I don't see <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, do we have any other questions? Yes, DTM has a quick question. So the yes, difference Margaret. between, um, so when you pin, you're saying when you pin the person, you are the only one seeing the pin. Yes, but, you, but, yes, only you will be seeing that pin. Uh-huh, so in order to, uh, you have to spotlight, then then everyone will be seen. If if persons are in if the they, gallery, if they're in the if gallery, the host, you, if the host, if the host or co-host spotlight, then uh -huh. everyone will be seeing that person. That uh -huh. is the default. Okay. But you can change and go into, into speaker view, into gallery view, whichever one you want, and you can pin who you want. Right, okay. But that is what you will be seeing, just you. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Um, we, will, on we will be testing all this out in, the, in, in subsequent meetings. Thank you. Oops. Earlier on, you were showing how to I'm very bad with the technology. Okay. Uh, Risha, go ahead. Jean, go ahead. 
Hi. Earlier on, you actually showed how to start up the Zoom meeting. Yes. Yeah. I'd like to see that. Okay. Let me let me go back to what we do. We go and we go into Zoom. Yeah. Zoom.us. Uh -huh. And this is what comes up. You can join a meeting if you have the information already, the Zoom ID and the password. You can host a meeting yes. or you can go into your own personal account. Now, your own personal account is what you have already created in Zoom. So if I go into my personal account, mm -hmm. it will give me my profile and everything else. I will then go into meetings on the profile, yes. select meetings. And I will come across to schedule a meeting. Yeah. So I will schedule a meeting where I will create that meeting first. Yeah. And give it which, whichever name. Hello. And that is the name of my meeting. And everything else, when I want the meeting, if how long I want the meeting to last, one hour, two hours. My time zone, if it is a recurring meeting that will happen every week, every every day or in the next three days. If I want it to be by registration only, if it is just a straightforward meeting to generate the passcode for me and you select your waiting room and you go to save. So you would save that meeting. Now, once you have that meeting saved, you go back up and you come back into your meetings. And this is where you have your upcoming meetings. Yeah. And you have that meeting here. Because, well, this one is already in session, so I can't go and join this meeting, but this is where you will go and start your meeting. You can see the option here to start meetings. And when you, when you save so, a meeting, when you save a program, a meeting, that, where do you put it so that you can see it again another time? Where you will put it so that you can... See it again. Or send it to somebody just to look at it. Okay. Once you have that meeting, this is the name of your meeting. Yeah. Here. And yeah. you come in and the, the information that you had entered comes up. It pops up. It tells you what is your meeting ID. It tells you what is your passcode. Yeah. 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 Now you come here, right here, we'll give you the registration link. Yeah. And you can copy this invitation, copy it, and everything yeah. will come up. And that is what you will... You can email it or WhatsApp it to who you want to attend your meeting. Yeah, I'm talking about at the end, after the program, you save the whole meeting. Okay, after the recording has, after the meeting has ended, that is when the recording will be processed and to go yeah. to the cloud. You will get an email to tell you that your recording is now ready and yeah. you come back into the meeting now. Yeah. Let me quickly go because I'm well over time, I know. And you save everything. Here you see here no you won't save it it is it is done automatically. Okay. Now you come back into your settings and here you see recordings. Yeah. You go in recordings, and it will tell you you have the cloud recordings and the local recordings. Okay. Now this and it will give you recordings of the meetings, and here is where you can export these recordings now that you can play it in mp3 or wma whichever file that you want to play it in um question after you save the after you save the meeting because you create and then you save how do i send the meetings to persons how do you attend how do i send the meetings like email if i had to okay. invite you. you yeah you would copy the you would you would copy it has the meeting links there that it says copy yeah. And but once after, you go okay. into can you go back after after you save? Can you go back? Um, yeah. Here, copy invitation. If I press copy invitation, this is what you will see. It will give you the the meeting information that you have been invited to this Zoom meeting, and this is the information here. Yeah. Right, so you can copy this meeting invitation and then you can email it. Yeah. So if I go to copy meeting invitation, just copies everything here. Just copy it to the clipboard and I pick it up from the clipboard now and just paste it in, in an email or, or whichever 
means that I want to share it with. Yeah. Does that answer the question? I know how to do that now, but I, this. I want to know how to save something that I have done. If but, I want to do something privately at home, like I want to do one of my speeches and I want to save it so that I can share, give, share it with a friend or put it somewhere to save it. I don't know how to do that. Okay, you, you go in and you will host a meeting. You see uh -huh. the host a meeting? Yeah. You go and you host this meeting. So you're creating now a meeting that you want to, yes. to do. Yes. Right. I know how to do so that. Let, okay, so once you host your meeting and your meeting comes up, you will just go into the record, hit record, yeah. and then you, you do your presentation. Yeah. When the presentation is ended, you stop record, and it will... Once, the, once you close out the meeting now, the recording will be saved automatically to okay. your Zoom folder. A Zoom folder will be created under the name Zoom and you will go there and you will find, find your meetings by the date. Oh, by the date? Yes, because you may have a lot of meetings saved under that same folder. Okay, okay, okay. okay. You have to do this again. Sorry? You have to do this again. Yes, yes, yes. We can go through it again. <laughs> I got lost at I'm, the same part. No, I'm no. well over my time. I yes. got lost at the same okay, part. Not now, not now. It's just so much I don't know about Zoom. And okay, start... we'll, we'll know. We'll get to know more. I got, I got lost at the same part. The same? For a minute. After I save, right, the first thing you do, you go to Zoom US. Then you go to meetings, schedule a meeting, create uh -huh. a schedule meeting. Schedule a meeting. Yes. Then you create the meeting, you save. After you save, I want to get to, as I said After earlier, you save it, you come yes. back in meetings again. Yeah. And uh -huh. you, will see, you will see that meeting that you've created. Okay. Yeah, so, so this may be the meeting that you created, or this yeah. one. Uh -huh. And so you want to either start this meeting, so you can, you, you would click this meeting here. And right on the other side, it will tell you when to, well, right now it says join now because this meeting is in progress. Yes. But you, it will tell you to start this meeting. So that is where you go and you just start your meeting. Okay, so what I'm saying to you, if I want to send, okay, in the event I want to send a meeting to a friend, to invite a friend. Yes, you see, I, this, is, this is the registration link, this here, here. Okay, or so you can just here. copy, you can just yes. copy the meeting ID oh, here. And yeah. the passcode, the passcode mm -hmm. will be here. You copy that yeah. and they only need those two pieces of information. Okay. Okay, so I want to, to say thank you to everyone. I've been well over time. I know I'm going to get some licks later. <laughs> Bottom timer. Thank you for your patience. Thanks to everyone. And you can always send us your questions by email and we'll be receiving them and we'll try to answer all of them. So thank you for your patience. Thanks for attending. And it's over to you, to our general evaluator. Thank you very much, Mkiao. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank, thank you very much. Master. Thank you very much, DT and Mark. That was very Zoomified. Yes. <laughs> thank you for the interactive session and all the questions were very, very informative. So how we get in touch with you, Mark, yeah? And take it to us, at gmail.com. Gmail.com? Yes. Take because care. then we... And take it to us, masters. Because we'll be collating all the questions together. Okay, okay. And take it to us, masters, at gmail.com. That is correct. Put it right in the chat. I need to conquer this thing. I, I'm very poor. I'm very, I'm the weakest one with technology. Okay, we'll try to arrange one, especially for beginners, especially for beginners. Yes. But we'll have to do it in two, in two sessions because then we'll be going slower. Yeah, and yeah. You, will be do, you will be doing the work. I'll be just relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. You're welcome.